Oh. But impressive. Maybe they work with the phone company. It's probably nothing to worry about. Hello, serious soldiers. Well, the big news of the day is Daybreak Games has finally officially announced their reorganization. And we covered this in the first half of 2019, where people were digging up trademark filings by Daybreak Games. And names like Dark Paw Studios made it pretty obvious that they were going to break apart the franchises of Daybreak Games into their own development studios. And on the 21st, Daybreak Games executed on that plan that everyone expected. Dimensional Inc. Games will develop DC Universe Online in an unannounced title. At one point, speculation was floating around that since Daybreak Games already had DC Universe Online, the unannounced title was Marvel Universe Online. This is very rumor mill stuff, but they were picking up on some of the language in some of the job openings at Daybreak Games, and artists that were associated with the studio that worked on DC Universe Online posted some art of Marvel characters. So time will tell what Dimensional Inc. Games, their primary directive, of course, is to keep DC Universe going, but maybe there will be a new title announcement soon. Next, we have Dark Paw Games, a name derived from a beloved character in the EverQuest franchise. This studio will develop EverQuest 1 and 2. The press release was very careful to avoid talking about a sequel. It says their mission is to expand upon the unique and amazing fantasy adventure that is EverQuest and EverQuest 2 and develop the next innovation for the franchise. Carefully picked language to maintain hope for development in the future, but not allude to a new title in the franchise. Sure, they could, maybe, but even if they just keep going business as usual, releasing a few expansions every now and then, or a TLP server, that can qualify as innovation. And finally, Rogue Planet Games, the new development arm of Daybreak Games that will cover the Planetside franchise. Now, all three of these development studios have their own websites, but the websites basically just direct you back to the Daybreak Games website. Oh no, Sirius, the sky is falling. What does this all mean? Well, nothing, really, especially in the short term. It is a reorganization. It will help their parent company, Inception Acquisitions, better define the value of each IP, better track and manage the cost of each development studio, and ensure the revenue generated is supporting that size team. Daybreak Games is not going anywhere, it is just focusing on being a publisher rather than a developer. It will still manage marketing, sales, customer service, legal, so they will effectively provide all these services to these development studios common questions that will come up. People ask, well, was EverQuest or Planetside or DC Universe Online purchased by these new development studios? No, it is strictly a reorganization. A different company did not purchase them. It is still the same development team that was working on them a week ago, and it'll still be that same development team a week from now. Sure, the company has split apart, but only in name. Daybreak Games is headquartered in San Diego, and the employees of Rogue Planet Studios will continue to work in the same office as Daybreak Games. Obviously, there's all sorts of theories of what their motives are with this that are going to spring out of every forum on the internet. Does this mean they're going to sell Planetside? No, not necessarily, but turning Planetside's development studio into its own little package certainly would put it in a better position to be moved away from Daybreak Games if they wanted to. But Daybreak Games as a publishing studio needs games to publish. It doesn't work for them if they sell off their development studios and the associated franchises and have no games to be publisher of. So I don't think that is their primary goal with this reorganization. I've also seen is Daybreak Games going bankrupt? There's nothing to suggest that is happening and breaking up the studio doesn't really help anything or protect the franchises. Everything would probably get sold off in one big package anyway if that was the issue. This is good news though, right? Because now money I spend on Planetside will go right to Rogue Planet Studios. Well, it's not quite that cut and dry, but I would expect that now they are their own separate development studios, 
Daybreak Games will do a better job of keeping track of the cost of each development team and the revenue that that franchise is bringing in. So no, you shouldn't expect that it's a perfect 1-1 that the money you spend will definitely go to the Planetside franchise. But I do think this reorganization improves the odds of that happening. So on that end, it's definitely a positive. One thing that was generally glossed over in the announcement is what happens to H1Z1. Right now, H1Z1 is a game with a publisher, but no developer. For most of the time while they were executing this plan, that didn't really matter because H1Z1 was running around a 300 average concurrent user base. There's no reason to have a development team for a game that is that tiny. So it's not really something they had to worry about in the reorganization. H1Z1 has been in this weird limbo because the rights to it were sold off to Nantworks so they could develop a mobile game. And through the efforts of Jace Hall, backed by the community, he got Networks to actually take on the PC version of H1Z1, renamed to Z1 Battle Royale, and do some development of it. And they did. They allowed a team that was made up of old Daybreak employees to revert the game back to a specific season that the players liked the most. They did that development and released it to Tepid Results. And they ended up laying off all of those developers and basically handing the game back to Daybreak Games. Daybreak Games was always the publisher of it, but they kind of had handed development off. And then Networks basically just said, we're not going to develop the PC version. Here, take it. So after that, what was the Daybreak development team became a Networks development team and got laid off. H1Z1 is now sitting without a development team. Ironically, while they're doing the run-up to reorganization Daybreak Games, and H1Z has sort of been forgotten about because it was their worst performing title, it has had a major comeback in the last week and is actually significantly outperforming Planetside 2 right now. Just the past weekend, its peak player count almost reached 10,000. Its average concurrent user base is above that of Planetside 2 again. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with it. Z1 Battle Royale is already hitting its nostalgia phase where people want to go back to play it. I mean, it is basically the oldest battle royale that's hilarious to think about because in terms of age compared to something like an EverQuest or a Planetside 2, it's a baby. But the cycle is just so fast in battle royale, it's already the grandfather of battle royale and people are coming back to it for nostalgia's sake. And I think there is a major possibility to cash in on that sentiment. The question is, can Daybreak seize that opportunity? The real test for H1Z1 though and which should determine whether it's worth even putting a development team on it, is early February. Apex Legends releases its new season in early February. Fortnite releases its next season in early February. So part of the reason it's getting this uptick is because a lot of the Battle Royalers are just bored of the big titles. You know, that's what happens at the end of seasons. People already ground them, they finished them, or they got bored of them. They're looking for something else right now, and hey, nostalgia is driving them towards H1Z1. But if that population survives the release of the new Apex season and the new Fortnite season, then they really got something, and they got to start thinking about the nostalgia pitch on H1Z1. So guys, that's why H1Z1 wasn't really mentioned in the press briefing. It is a game with a publisher, Daybreak Games, but no development team. It is not part of any of the three spun out studios. If they deem it worthy of a development team again with its recent resurgence, I'm sure we'll see an announcement of another studio specific to H1Z1. If they decide to cram it back into Rogue Planet Studios or something because Cardo, the lead designer for H1Z1, is part of Rogue Planet Studios, that is going to be a hilariously awful turn of events for all diehard Planetside players. Just when we finally thought we got that monkey off our back, it's going to come back to haunt us. So guys, that's big news out of Daybreak Games right now. It is going to have zero effect on your day-to-day -day experience in any of these titles. It is still the same development teams working on them. And Daybreak Games is still the company servicing these titles. So when you're buying a membership, you're buying it through Daybreak Games. If you have an issue with your character, you're getting customer service through Daybreak Games. 
I am curious how it will work with the ops team, the team that manages the servers for all of these games. I would expect they're going to remain with Daybreak Games, but server performance has been frustrating, especially for Planet Side, and it seems like it's just hard to get the operations team time to look into the issues. Is it going to be even harder now that they're technically separate companies? Hey, Rogue Planet Studios, DCUO, and EverQuest are making more money than you. We don't have time to work on your servers. I don't know. The reality is, is it was a struggle while it was part of Daybreak Games, and it's probably going to be a pretty similar struggle while they're separate. I was hoping that data migration they spoke of might be associated with the reorganization, and then PlanetSide could control its own destiny and hopefully control its server's issues better as well. Time will tell just how much autonomy Rogue Planet Studios gets. Okay, fellow Araxians, Norathians, and Metropolisians. Metropolis City, that's DC, right? That's all I got for you right now. Feel free to fire more questions at me down in the comments, or really the best place to get me is in my Discord. But until next time, I will see you, Planetside.